today we will be dealing with uh, Dupontin's contracture, uh, which is a tightening of the fascia, uh, the palmar fascia, as it comes down and attaches to the base of all the fingers. And what happens, the fascia that covers the palm is actually stronger than steel in comparison, and it covers the muscles um, or the palm of the hand that allows you to wrinkle the tissue and grip. So what happens is that the fascia, as it anchors into the base of each digit, contracts and causes the hand and the fingers to curl downward into the hand and you have the inability to open the hand all the way. One of the key things you want to address here is stretching the palmar fascia. Again, these are some of the same stretches that you're going to utilize uh, to stretch the uh, flexor muscles in the forearm, uh, the finger flexors, wrist flexors, and finger adductors. And what we're going to do here is, again, the basic palm up stretch. Now, you don't have to extend the elbow all the way. I can just take the fingers and wrist here and bend them back. What happens if my fingers are curled in this position, I want to take them and try to push them back into an extended position, holding the stretch 10 to, 10 to 15 seconds and then releasing and they may end up curling backwards into this position but again you need to spend time focusing on stretching the fascia you can do this in a uh, you know palm down position here stretching the wrist and fingers back but it's not just about stretching the wrist is that I can have the wrist actually straight but then again just focusing and stretching the fingers back because I want to stretch this fascia as it is attached to the base of the fingers I could take each finger segment holding it and stretching it, holding it and stretching it back, holding it and stretching it back, and addressing each finger segment as well. And again, you're going to hold each of these finger stretches for 10 to 15 seconds. Do about three sets of each of these stretches. What you immediately want to do then is obviously strengthen the extensor muscles after stretching the flexor muscles. And then what we're going to do to use to utilize that is the flexed in orthotic glove. I'm going to go ahead and put it on here. And so now that I stretch those, uh, those tight restrictive uh, tissues, again the fascia, fingers maybe possibly, and again in this curled position, is that I am now going to work on extension, stretching this out actively, and then strengthening the extensors actively. So palm up, isolated motion right here. I can do this in an isolated position and I just want to open my hand as far as I possibly can. Maybe it's only there, but what happens as the extensors are contracted, the flexor muscles and the fascia automatically have to relax. So as soon as tension is put onto the extensor group, these muscles have to relax. And so what you're actively doing is simultaneously stretching the flexors and the fascia, palmar fascia, while strengthening the extensors and contracting them. The palm up exercise here in an isolated fashion or you can do elbow moving whatever is more convenient for you another one is just holding the hand wrist in a straight position this is just the five finger isolated opening opening as far as you can that's it I'm just extending my fingers and opening the hand as much as possible and what that again is doing is contracting the extensor uh, finger extensors and abductors and help straight strengthen uh, stretching the fascia again on the palm of the hand here. Um, there's those two basic exercises that you can perform. You can also do a third which is having the, the muscles here, uh, the fingers flex in this position here. I'm not really opening my hand, spreading my fingers. I'm just extending my fingers in this position here. Just working on extending them and stretching the fascia on the front. Okay, so those are your basic exercises. I mean, there's a variety you can do um, that are listed in the, the exercise program, um, but you want to start with your stretches, finish with your extension exercises in order to help reduce the contracture of the pulmonary fascia, lengthen it, so then you have a free range of motion. And what will happen over time is that the fingers will be able to extend further, further, further from this position here until you actually have a full range of motion. Um, in the hand. Um, you can also probably proceed the stretches if you want to by doing some self-massage of the fascia points at the base of the fingers. There's probably some burning that will occur when you're actually massaging these, these points at the base of the fingers. But just working the tissues in here, um, base of the thumb here, base of the pinky, this is the hypothenar, hypothenar eminence, this is the thenar eminence here. 
stretching or massaging these muscles, then performing your stretches, then performing your exercises. But all the stuff's listed out in the routine in terms of the uh, sets, reps uh, of exercises you need to do for a Dupuytren's contracture uh, and eliminate this condition. Thank you, and we will have another program here for you soon.